I recently had a heated conversation with a very dear friend of mine that is super excited about cloud native. Now, don't get me wrong. I am excited about cloud native as well. My argument though is why are you excited about cloud native today? I mean, we've had cloud for a while now. We've, why, why weren't you excited about cloud native, you know, three years ago? I mean, we've had Paz, right? Paz is the ultimate cloud native. And his response shocked me to a certain degree because he didn't consider Paz as being cloud native. So we went back and forth. And of course, the research person in me had to go do some research and figure out kind of where all of this started and why he takes that position. Stick around. This is going to be a lot of fun. Well, welcome back, everyone. My name is Elias Kinaser, and today we're going to answer the question, is PaaS or platform as a service cloud native? Now, if you like this type of content, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and definitely leave a comment below. And starting with leave a comment below before we even get started with everything that I found around this topic, why don't you leave me a comment before you even watch the rest of the video and tell me from your perspective, is PaaS cloud native or better yet, what do you perceive as cloud native? So when I say cloud native, does it ring in your mind the cloud provider's native services, past services from AWS, from Azure, from Google, or do you immediately go towards container native types of applications? So I'm super curious when you hear cloud native, what you kind of, where do you go towards from that perspective? Now, where better to start framing the conversation than the first define cloud native. In order to start having this debate, let's make sure we all understand what cloud native is. And for that, we're going to head over to the cloud native foundation and get the actual definition for cloud native. Cloud native technologies empower organizations to build and run scalable applications in modern dynamic environments, such as public, private, and hybrid clouds, containers, service meshes, microservices, Immutable infrastructure and declarative APIs exemplify this approach. These techniques enable loosely coupled systems that are resilient, manageable, and observable. Combined with robust automation, they allow engineers to make high impact changes frequently and predictably with minimal toll. Okay, so my friend and I, you know, went through and read this definition together, and then I paused for a second and I'm like, oh, great. This sounds like cloud to me. So this sounds exactly like all of the building blocks for platform as a service. So then you must agree with me, my friend, now that we've read this definition together, that PaaS is cloud native, right? And his answer was, well, not exactly. My reaction was, huh? What do you mean? He's like, well, traditional PaaS or platform as a service was based on Heroku and the 12 factor app. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're, you're getting too much into the weeds. Like, is this cloud native or not? He's like, no, you know, it, it's, it's based on the 12 factor app. Okay. So again, the research person in me, I'm like, well, let's go do some digging and research what the 12 factor app is. Again, you're talking to someone who focuses on cloud, someone who's INL infrastructure and operations background, cloud architecture and design, but I'm not a developer. And all of these concepts to a large degree are developer driven, developer centric. And in the development world, world, there is a divide. There are some folks that have, you know, the 12 factor as a synonym to cloud native. I am not one of these people. And then you have another camp that believes that cloud native has absolutely nothing to do with the old paths, let's call it. And as a result, there is this kind of debate. So today we're going to simplify it and clarify it. So to do that, let's go take a look at what does the 12 factor app even mean? In the modern era, software is commonly delivered as a service called web apps or software as a service. The 12 factor app is a methodology for building software as a service apps that use declarative formats for setup automation to minimize time and costs for new developers joining the project, have a clean contract with the underlying operating system, offering maximum portability between execution environments are suitable for deployment on modern cloud platforms, obviating the need for servers and system administration. Yeah, right. Minimize divergence between the development and production, enabling continuous deployment for maximum agility and can scale without significant changes to tooling, architecture, or development practices. 
The 12 factor methodology can be applied to apps written in any programming language and which use any combination of backing services such as databases, queuing services, memory cache, etc. I took a pause after I read this and we, him and I read this together and I'm like, that sounds like cloud native. That sounds like PaaS. So why can't this, if, if this is your argument, why can't this be considered PaaS? And again, he took me back, well, you know, this was developed by Heroku. And for those of you that aren't aware, uh, in the early 2000s, Heroku was one of the early companies that began to advertise that you don't have to worry about infrastructure, just bring your application and you can deploy it on our cloud and it will just run without you having to worry about infrastructure. You just had to focus on a set of principles. So when you think about the 12 factor app, the 12 factor app to a large degree grew out of the experience of the Heroku team as they were building this platform. But see, here's the funny part. So Heroku launched in 2007, company's still around, you can go check out their website. But there was another company that launched its first service, its, its first cloud service in November of 2004. That was Amazon Web Services. Do you know what that service was? Those of you that said simple queuing services or SQS, you would be absolutely correct. So that predates even the Heroku team and the 12-factor app. Later in 2006, Amazon Web Services then launched S3 and then they launched EC2. So all of these services were happening. Now, I don't want to have a debate on whether or not, you know, 12-factor app is PaaS and then cloud native is something completely different. My argument is they are part of the same approach and you can use one or to develop this platform in some time in combination because you can also take the 12 factor app very easily apply it to containers today and you can apply it to microservices and apply it to all of these other things so when i'm reading the 12 factor app and without getting into the nitty gritty and highlighting you know well we do this differently here and the design principle is very different to me they look like complementary or another tool in your chest that you can use and deploy as part of developing your cloud native architecture. So for me, I don't see a difference here. I see them as complementing each other, completing each other. They are not different. It sounds to some folks, at least, some people are taking the approach with cloud native and they're associating it with containers to the point where they will call it a container native application. So the focus is on advancing container technology. Again, I don't have any beef with that. I'm not trying to get into the middle of that debate. I'm just trying to say that we cannot essentially say that PaaS is not cloud native. PaaS predates the CNCF, which was founded in 2015. And we have all of these experiences, all of these cloud providers that were already making offering these services that have all of the characteristics that cloud native offers without necessarily, sometimes they were container based, sometimes they weren't, but the principles, the design principles were also there. I still couldn't convince my friend. My friend still said, you know, no, you know, it's different. So we had to go digging a little more. And I found a fantastic article by Microsoft that I want to share with you. So in this article, they clearly say, Microsoft clearly states that the 12 factor app is a collection of patterns that are closely related to microservices approaches is also considered a requirement for cloud native application architectures. So I produce this and put it in front of my friend and say, here's a link from Microsoft that basically also reinforces the point that 12 factor app is, you know, is needed for the development of cloud native architectures. Convinced yet? He's not convinced and I was, I was, I was insistent I'm, we're gonna pin him down. We're just going to get him, right? So then I find this webinar on the CNCF's website, right? You can't refute that. Now this is priceless. You guys and gals are going to love this. So the speaker on this webinar um, is Alexis Richardson, who is the chair of the CNCF for TOC. And one of the attendees of this webinar directly asks the question, so is PaaS considered cloud native? and take a look at how he responds because he also falls back on the 12 factor app. So let's listen to this together and then I'll comment real quick. So could we then say that cloud native is a de facto standard for cloud pass as in platform as a service? Um, let me go back to this picture. Uh, I think pass is often associated with 12 factor models like Heroku. So I think, you know, cloud native is about a more general set of patterns, uh, patterns for scaling, and making your applications more available, regardless of whether they're 12-factor web apps, or even they could be data streams processing. Down here on the bottom left in our picture, 
we have a bunch of monitoring technology going on, which is by no means traditionally associated with PaaS. But if you if you free your mind of PaaS as traditionally understood, then I think it is it is the basis of the next generation of platforms. So in that sense, I would say yes. So then I ask my friend, I'm like, is this coming directly from the CNCF? And putting aside a little bit how he danced around and jumped around, and again, he reassociated that with 12 Factor, but then at the end, he basically said, well, you know, if you free your mind, blah, 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 then yes. So, my friend, would you then say that Paz is cloud native? And at this point, he really didn't have any comeback anymore. Uh, the evidence is clear. So he basically took a pause and said, yeah. <laughs> Victory, right? <laughs> so, but so here's the takeaway from this. So, if we were to summarize sort of what we learned, or at least what I learned during my research, and again, setting aside uh, being on, I, I don't like being on one side of the argument completely, right? So, again, I don't want to say that 12 factor app is a synonym for cloud native, but I also don't want to say that PaaS is not cloud native. There is a middle ground here. And let's take a look at kind of how I've, I've summarized this. If we put all of the technologies, all of the techniques of cloud native in a bucket, those become kind of our building blocks. We can then very easily add to this bucket the 12 factor app. And by you know taking it from this perspective, then different vendors, different organizations, different enterprises can use these technologies, can use these patterns, can use these principles to either develop public PaaS, in the case of AWS, it'll be their public platform as a service, Azure PaaS as well, Google's PaaS, Oracle's PaaS, or it could be a private PaaS like in the form of a Red Hat with OpenShift or Pivotal, or enterprises can then take these set of principles and tools and technologies and build their own platform based on all of these. So the argument here is no longer, is PaaS cloud native? PaaS is definitely cloud native. Now, how you want to slice that pie and you know you wanna get into the nitty gritty of you know the technologies that were used back then versus the technologies that are used today, the idea here is all of those are principles, techniques, uh, patterns, technologies that you can use to develop cloud native. But you cannot say cloud native has nothing to do with PaaS or you cannot say PaaS is not cloud native. PaaS precedes the CNCF and this whole conversation. And cloud native should not be restricted to a container conversation. So this was my, my beef with my friend was that every time I tried to get a differentiation from him as far as well, what do you mean by cloud native infrastructure, his de facto, he failed over essentially always to highlighting the importance of containers and containers are very important. I'm not diluting their importance, but what I'm saying is, let's make sure we, we take a look at the whole picture and not a narrow look at the picture. Yes, we should be excited about cloud native architectures, about technologies today, but they're not new. We've had these for a while and the excitement should be building instead of, hey, there's this grand new thing, cloud native architecture, cloud native applications, cloud native infrastructure. We've been talking about this. We've been talking about immutable. We've been talking about automation. We've been talking about disposability, scalability, availability, all of these conversations we've been having for the last eight or nine years already. So at the end of this video, I hope this clarifies things. I hope you learned something and you got value out of this video. If you stayed with me to the end, thank you so much for watching. I love you all. Make sure you like, subscribe and share. Leave a comment below. I'd love to know if I've missed anything and if you agree with the conclusion and where I've kind of landed in this argument. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I will see you in the next one.